there's a measurable value in the ritual of repetition. The things we do, the places we go. Again, it is April, and we find ourselves here with the Masters, rightfully situated on its traditional weekend, a notion of normalcy grows. Over the past year, lifestyles have changed and those traditions have been challenged. But as the azaleas do each March, we are back in bloom. This 345 acre plot of land, no stranger to a comeback, the king's eagle, the graying golden bear, Lefty's levitation. Is it his time? Yes! And Watson's wedge. Oh. Did it hook? Oh, what a shot! And while the man in red may be missing this year, this precedent, too, is far from forgotten. There it is. A win for the ages. Oh, wow! The return to glory. The game's most celebrated artists of today will offer their brushstrokes by forged steel on the greatest canvas in golf. Will it be the expressionist lash of Bryson DeChambeau? Or will the Renaissance reign supreme as Jordan Spieth looks to rebuild confidence at the place it was both gained and lost? Perhaps the mid-century move of Justin Thomas will finally crack Dr. McKenzie's code. Will it be Dustin Johnson again unfazed? This time not by silence, but by a roar awoken. The long-awaited Masters has a long-awaited champion in Dustin Johnson. Despite who dons the game's greatest garment come Sunday, this year, the promise of spring's renewal means far more than golf immortality. It is right and ritual return at the Masters. Our Joe Musso providing a nice look at the tournament as it gets set to go on Thursday. Talking about a lot of the favorites. Well, what about some of those long shots? Hey, let's remember, Tiger Woods not a favorite when he won in 2019. He was plus 1,200. And if you're looking for a long shot to lay some ducats on, here's a few of the longest odds winners over the past 15 years. Mark Immelman's brother, Trevor. Heads the list. He was plus 15,000 heading into the 2008 tournament. Uh, Patrick Reed, most recent, at plus 4,000 in 2018. And for more on the Masters and a view from the course itself, we now welcome in CBS Sports HQ's golf analyst Kyle Porter. KP, good to see you this morning. Obviously a great setting for you. Set the scene for us. Uh, what's the atmosphere like over there? And uh, what are the players up to today with no par 3 contests? Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of players getting kind of final preparation in for this 2021 Masters, and they're 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 having to grind a little bit, and and the reason is because the course is is looking a lot different than it did not just in November when we had this you know the long-awaited Masters as we just heard there, but also from 2019, which is the last time we had a Spring Masters here. It's a lot faster, it's a lot firmer. I was checking out some of the greens on Tuesday, and they're they're a different color than I've I've been coming here for 14 years. They're a different color on Tuesday, Wednesday than I've seen them in any year in the past. Now, does that mean we're gonna get a super fast, super firm Masters. I hope so, but you know, it could rain. It could rain over the next couple of days. It could slow down a little bit, but I'm really interested to see how that plays out. And obviously the atmosphere here is, you know, it's subdued because there's not as many people as normal, but there's also a little bit of electricity because uh, in November there was nobody here. You know, it was, it was media, it was players, and that's about it. There were very few people out on the course. So the, the, the patrons that are here, the people that are here, they're very appreciative to even be out here. It's been beautiful all week long. And I think everybody's excited to get the 85th Masters underway. Yeah, as sports comes back, we're seeing a lot of appreciation from fans and patrons who are able to uh, make it to events uh, like the Masters, such storied events that have become tradition. Uh, Kyle, one of the many articles that you've posted this week over on CBSSports.com as we get ready for this Masters lays out the reasoning for why we should root for nine golfers in particular this week. We want to ask you about a few of those. Uh, let's start with Jordan Spieth. Why are we rooting for him this week? 
Well, I, I think Spieth has become incredibly uh, relatable over the last few years. As much, as much as somebody who makes you know millions of dollars a year and plays golf for a living can be relatable to you and I and to the people watching, uh, he's he's wandered through the desert. Honestly, he hasn't he hadn't won since the 2017 Open Championship until he did last week at the Texas Open, and he struggled and he was vulnerable about it. He he just he's talked all along the way about um, you know how much he struggled with not being as good as he once was. Nearly dropped out of the top 100 in the world. He's obviously had a ton of success here. He was only beaten by 14 players uh, over his first five Masters, which is just unbelievable. A couple of seconds. Obviously, he won in 2015. I think he's somebody who uh, he, he has a real appreciation and joy for this place, but he's also become a lot more relatable just as a person uh, now as a 27-year-old, maybe to compared to the 21 or 22-year-old that won here. Yeah, uh, uh, Kyle, one of the guys I'm marking off on his calendar the last time Speed won, 1,351 days, so he gets to start <laughs> anew. Uh, Kyle, you said after DJ won the 2020 Masters that he might be the most endearing golfer to root for. Uh, do you still feel that way about him as we enter the 2021 edition? I, I do feel that, you know, he's somebody, DJ uh, can come off a little bit aloof. I think everybody knows that. But there's also times where, you know, uh, he famously got asked the question at last Masters in November where, uh, you know, somebody said, what's your favorite tradition? And he said, I don't know. I like the sandwiches. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, that's how I feel about being at Augusta National. So he, he definitely has become endearing. I don't know if he's as relatable as some of the other guys, but he, he's just this character who uh, he became a little bit of a tragic figure early on in his career, right? He lost majors. He he he, he blew majors. He, 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 he kind of melted down in certain places. And so finally, when he wins Oakmont and then when he wins Augusta and, and, and cries and breaks down completely on the you know, during the ceremony there, right, man, that, that's kind of endearing because he had so much failure, so much failure at the major championships, and then he finally broke through. And I think him winning a second time would be, I think it'd be a very popular win. There's only been three guys that have ever done it. Uh, Jack Nicholas uh, did it, Tiger Woods, and then obviously our very own Nick Faldo uh, did it in, in the early 90s. So DJ would fit in nicely with those guys that have gone back to back. Yeah, and I mean, talking about the sandwiches, I mean, pimento cheese and egg salad. Who doesn't love one of those sandwiches? The patrons will be happy to have those back this week. Uh, Colin Morikawa seems like a Masters champion in waiting, Kyle. He has all the tools. That smile is as genuine as it gets. It's hard not to cheer for Morikawa, isn't it? Yeah, the only thing more electric than his smile is his swing. He's the best iron player in this field. He's the best iron player in the world. And, you know, he's somebody who I, I think people are maybe still don't totally know who Colin Morikawa is. Even though he won the PGA Championship at Harding Park uh, in the fall, you know, last August, I guess at the end of the summer, that was at a time where people were kind of getting back into sports. But it, I, I don't think it was really humming like it is right now. And to win the Masters is just a different level. And, and I think Morikawa is uh, all these young guys in the sport are uh, they're very likable honestly they come off as, as uh, again very endearing very likable and I think Mark Hall fits in that uh, really nicely the way he talks about just the, the game of golf the way he he relates to some of the older guys in the sport I think if if he's in contention I, I think you're going to get uh, you know, the people who are tuning in this week are really going to fall in love with kind of who Colin Morikawa is if he's able to kind of get up there and mix it up at the top of the leaderboard. Uh, that that gives you an assignment for the first cut pod there, Kyle. You guys have to come up with golf's best villain right now. I guess all these guys are so likable. It's so very difficult. Uh, lastly, we have to talk about Tony Finau. I mean, this is a guy who's always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Uh, I mean, that's really only the best way I can think of to describe him. Well, yeah, and, and we're standing. By the way, golf's best villain, I think, is a pretty easy one. That's Bryson DeChambeau. That's the guy that's swinging, you know, <laughs> uh, hit, hit, trying to trying to hit 215 miles an hour on the driving range earlier this week. We're actually standing near the spot where Tony Finau nearly snapped his ankle off uh, a few years ago, whenever he was playing the par three here. Uh, and then he goes out, finishes in the top ten. Dustin Johnson has talked about how, like, I, I can't believe he even played in the tournament, essentially, uh, much less to finish in the top ten. Finau, uh, I think he became. I think people really started to like him then but yes he is somebody who over the last few years he gets so close uh he's never won uh, you know a non-opposite field event his only win remains the the puerto rico open several years ago uh and now uh you're in a situation where if he wins a major championship uh, i think that would be a, a, not only a very popular win uh, for people watching but also among the players i think he's a very uh well-liked well-respected guy and say that, that that's worth rooting for at augusta national this week yeah, and good point with DeChambeau. i mean the guy
guy's trying to break golf, so I guess, yes, he would be a good <laughs> villain for now. CBS Sports HQ golf analyst Kyle Porter at Augusta for us this week as we get you all set for the 85th Masters. Good to see you, KP. Masters coverage continues all week long here on CBS Sports HQ, Paramount Plus, the CBS Sports app, and, of course, CBS. You can catch all the action from the opening two rounds over with our friends on ESPN. The final two rounds available on CBS, Paramount Plus, and the CBS Sports app Saturday and Sunday. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.